outside the capital city of Vilnius in Lithuania lies a completely unique neighborhood. Now Vilnius is itself a fascinating place. It's got grand architecture in both neoclassical and gothic style, as well as of course the grand high-rise modern buildings that are popping up everywhere around the city. However, just outside Vilnius is a neighborhood. It's still within Vilnius. It's about 30 minutes on a bus. But just outside Vilnius, the hustle and bustle, lies a very interesting place called Fabianiskes. And Fabianiskes is very, very interesting because it's unlike anything that you'll see in Vilnius, as a tourist at least. Now, if you've not seen our channel before, one thing we love to do is we like to get out of the tourist areas and explore more of the residential streets and get to see what the locals live like and what day-to-day -day life is like outside of the more glamorous places. Um, too many tourists pay attention to that kind of stuff and there's plenty of that on YouTube, but there's not enough you know, stuff showing the real side of, of places. Um, and I, for one, love different unique architecture. Now, the interesting thing about Fabianiskes is that actually it has a very, very strong Soviet architecture. This place was built in the 80s and it is very much a namesake for its time in terms of how it looks. And one of the more interesting facts about this place is that it was actually the filming location for uh, Chernobyl the miniseries and it played the part of Pripyat. Um, now why did they choose Fabianiskes to become Pripyat? Well from what I understand this place is as I've said a rather new Soviet district. It was built in the 80s and uh, it was built actually around the same time that the unfortunate catastrophe of Chernobyl that occurred. But the interesting thing is, is that Fabianiskes has a lot of quite new trees. So as a result, it actually embodies the look and feel of what Pripyat in the 80s would have been like before the disaster. It would have embodied what the look and feel of the place may have been. And so they wanted to capture that and they needed a newer Soviet style neighborhood and they needed it with newer trees. And if you look around us, you will see you've got plenty of these newer trees and the buildings are very, very much in the Soviet style with the brutalist architecture and the high rise buildings designed to house many people and to provide low cost accommodation for people. Now, that's not to say that this place is a low cost slum or anything like that. We ain't that kind of channel, we ain't here to bash Lithuania. We're just interested in the other side of the city. Plenty of people on YouTube are fascinated with the big high rise buildings and stuff. And of course we are as well. And they are beautiful. And Vilnius is an incredible capital city. And indeed Lithuania, I don't know about you love, it's an incredible country isn't it? Okay. We went to uh, Torake the other day. Stunning. We came through Kaunas to get here. Also very beautiful. And Vilnius is easily one of the most beautiful capital cities we've seen amongst many of the capital cities we've been to. But every country has an identity beyond that that the tourists see. And Fabianiskes, which if you're curious, here we go. So Fabianiskiu, I think that's Gatava or Gatav. I can never pronounce that word, but it's uh, basically, whoa. I always do that, don't I? Zoom right into my face. Uh, Gatav, Gatava, is, uh, it means street, basically. So Fabianiska Street. So let's have a look down here. Let's see what we've got. So I'm just curious to see what everyday life is like in, uh, you know, a Lithuanian neighborhood. You know, a Soviet Lithuanian neighbor neighborhood to be precise. And, you know, I did not believe for one second that Vilnius would have such interesting places like this. I mean, of course I knew it would have interesting places, but places this unique. Now, this isn't gonna be for everybody, but for me, this is actually fascinating because this is very much a slice of history. 
right in front of you. How often do you get to see Soviet style buildings in a major capital city? A lot of countries uh, that were once in the USSR tried to hide that fact. They tried to shield themselves from the fact that they ever had anything to do with that. But uh, there are still remnants here and uh, I think history should never be forgotten. It should be uh, preserved. And so the fact that they haven't torn down all these buildings and tried to rebuild them is actually very fortunate. Um, and as well, it provides accommodation for people who would like to live near Vilnius and might not perhaps be able to afford the prices in Vilnius. Um, and one thing I'm also quite interested to know as a result of coming to Fabianiskas is, is it cheaper to visit this part of the city? So in Vilnius, for instance, it's uh, parts of it can be quite expensive. You know, you can be spending quite a bit on a meal in comparison to uh, other nearby European cities that we've stayed in. And we want to see, well, is this place cheaper or is it the same prices as Vilnius? And what's it like to live here? What's the real life like outside of all of the tourist hustle and bustle? Because when you ask the locals in Vilnius, they'll always say the same thing. Well, it's a lovely city, but it's kind of touristy. <laughs> it's the same with Trake. Very, very nice city. Very, very touristy. So it'll be interesting to see something different. So we're going to get in to the heart of uh, Fabianiskas and try and meet some people and try and learn more. But it's a rather unique city. And at the same time, see what inspired the uh, Chernobyl mini series as well. So let's do it. Well, so far so good. I'm enjoying Fabianiskas. Um, you know, it's a lot more peaceful and quiet. There's no tourists. That's always a good thing. I'm, uh, I am a tourist, but I am not a fan of some of the tourists that I meet because, well, well for instance, I'll give you an example. So the other day, I saw this wonderful statue in Vilnius. It was stunning. Can't remember which one it was though. And there was this uh, like group of tourists. I could tell they were tourists. Um, they had their cameras and stuff. And they were literally climbing on top of this statue to take a photo. I was like, you have got to be kidding me. And I've seen that happen in England as well. So it's not just you guys in uh, Vilnius that have to deal with this. I saw this in, uh, in England. Uh, I went to a place called Nottingham. If you're not familiar, it's a little town. Um, well, not a little town, it's a quite a big size city actually. It's a city um, in the middle of England, basically. And uh, it's where Robin Hood's from, if you know Robin Hood. If you're not, I'm going to look him up. Fascinating story. But anyway. I was in Nottingham, saw the exact same thing. A bunch of tourists were climbing over the statue of uh, Robin Hood, <laughs> which of course is a local legend and a bit of a local treasure in that area. And I just found that to be incredibly disrespectful. So, you know, I think tourists, unfortunately, give other tourists a bad name, which is why for me it's important to try and learn some of the language where possible and try and, you know, understand what it's like outside of the tourist areas essentially and try and get to know the locals a bit better because to be honest tourists kind of try and stay in their own bubble and they don't make an effort to learn about the people of the place they visit you know and uh yeah they may get a tour guide and stuff and that's fine helps the economy of course but helping the economy is one thing but getting to know the people that live in the country is the other but let's get a look we're into the heart of the city now we're into the heart of uh, Fabianiskas, should I say. And this is what we're looking at. So it's quite interesting. You have these high-rise Soviet-style buildings, but you've also got these more modern buildings that are starting to spring up. So Fabianiskas looks like they're trying to uh, make it a little bit more modern and in keeping with the modern times. And God, I hope I make it over <laughs> in time. <laughs> you don't get very long sometimes, do you? But uh, yeah. We're gonna go and try and find, I keep doing that. <laughs> We're gonna go and try and find some food and uh, help fuel our journey. But look at this, a very nice uh, shopping center here. Mandarinas, Prekibos Centras, Prekibos Centras. Sorry guys, Lithuanian isn't my strong suit. 
I've been learning. If you look on the previous videos, you'll see some of my questionable attempts to speak Lithuanian with people, but it's an incredibly difficult language. Uh, not one that I'm uh, very good at. To be honest, Lithuania, <laughs> shout out to you guys. You provided the most difficult challenge so far. I've been to Greece, Albania, Slovakia, Bosnia, Montenegro, Croatia. All of these countries have quite difficult languages. Poland. I got relatively decent at pronouncing words in Poland. In Polish, sorry. Can't even do English well, can I? And yeah, Lithuania. The language has completely destroyed me. I cannot do it. But uh, the more I spend here and the more I speak it, I guess slightly better, but not good enough. <laughs> but yes, yeah, go inside this shopping mall and I want to show you both sides of Fabrikniškes as well. I don't want to show you all the high rise buildings. There's more to this place. I mean, look, got a KFC over there. I actually saw the reviews for KFC and uh, it weren't very good. Tam, just gonna pop in here quickly. Tam's uh, wondering if we're looking for a bakery, but I wanna look inside here quickly. I want to represent uh, Fabrikniškes as best as I can. Wow. To be honest, that, uh, that picture there, I genuinely thought she was staring at me then. I was like, what, what am I doing wrong? Well, a guy with a camera in Fabrikniškes probably isn't a common sight. But let's, uh, let's have a look at the shopping mall in Fabrikniškes. Very cool. I like it. Things are opening. We actually have a top shop in the UK as well, which is pretty cool. I know it's not a top shop, the clothes shop. We, uh, we have a top shop in the UK and it sells, what does it sell? Clothes, doesn't it? Custom, the bakery. It's not like anyone's in there at the moment. But we shall partake in a, uh, in a pastry or two. I do fancy a drink, so can we get through here? Is that how you get in? Or is that the way out? That's the way out. <laughs> oh no, it is the way in. Hey, look at that, guys. See, I'm a, a dumb English tourist, mastering the basics of entering a building look. <laughs> but let's have a look. So, this is, uh, I believe we went to this store. Yeah, Vrimi. I think we went to this store recently, didn't we? And uh, it was all right. It was not the cheapest, but it also wasn't massively expensive either. Very good, got a bakery over here as well. Might be cheaper than Crustum. Then again, Crustum's actually quite cheap, isn't it? Had a Crustum the other day. It was, uh, it was quite nice. But um, I don't know how authentic it is. It might have been, we, in uh, the UK we have something called Greg's and it does the job, we all like it, but it's not what you'd call an authentic bakery. Oh, look at this. What the hell is that? It's like a roast chicken, goose, pork, beautiful. Right, let's get a drink time. I'm parched. It's uh, hard work traveling around with this camera all day, talking all the time. <laughs> so let's find ourselves a drink. If, uh, if you joined us for our video in Kaunas, you'll see that uh, my shoe uh, completely snapped in half the minute I, uh, sorry, not Kaunas, uh, Trake. And the minute I stepped off the train in Trake, my shoe snapped clean off and I actually had to come to Rimi. I don't know if you roll the R guys, I do apologise if you don't. I'm just gonna assume you do though. But I came to a Rimi. It does sound right saying Rimi. <laughs> Rimi, that sounds a bit better. Um, I came to one of them to find some super glue and they saved my life. Otherwise that uh that Trake trip, Trake, sorry, I almost pronounced that wrong. Trake trip would have uh, never happened. I've got to ask as well, is it Trakai or Trake? Am I getting that wrong? I've asked a few people, I get different answers from people. Okay, what do we have? Various different choices. Oh, Gearia. For a second I thought it was going to say Gira, because I was going to say that's not Gira, is it? What do you fancy, Tom? I don't know we can carry, carry with us, ideally. Something that's not fizzy. Ah, there's the old Gira. I'm, I'm still not made up my mind on Gira, guys. It's a very, very unique taste. Not something that we have in the UK very often. Uh, but... Well, we got seven up various juices kombucha is very very kombucha 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 that's the fair very very popular in lithuania i've noticed uh, 
pear, not a fan of pear, grape, looks fizzy to me, lemonade, okay, what you got there, some water, I could uh, do with some loose right now, but it's only like 9am, 5pm somewhere, hey, that's, uh, that's a good way of looking at it, um, is that Georgian, Georgian script, it's carbonated, I've had enough carbonated water on this trip. I had to drink tummies. Uh, mineral water. There you go. I'm quite happy with that. Let's go and get it brought and then hopefully cross them. That place has a uh, has something so has someone in there that we can buy something off. A shop without a uh, shop without a shopkeeper. That's that's a new one for me. Where do we pay? Where's the Where's the people at? <laughs> I've got to be here somewhere. We're all blocked off, look. Ah, self checkouts. Okay. Are these closed? Some of these are closed. Ah, here we go, I think. Is that one open? Close, 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 open. There we go. Sweet. Thank means yes. Ah, English, English. There you go, guys. English. Thank you so much, Lithuania. Helping us out there. Awesome. Stick here. Right, let's see if anyone's in Kostum. I said, I don't see anyone in there. Maybe it's uh, not open yet, but we checked on the times and and there was, it was open and the lights are on and but just no one's there. They could be in the back actually. Let's go and have a look for the very least and see if we can make an option in advance. And wow, so many great choices. I do like this place. I do like this place. What have we got? So many choices. Svekia, are you Skalbatang Lishke? I do apologize for my pronunciation, it's terrible. Um, I'm just wondering, is there anything here that you'd recommend, like to try? We're not obviously from Lithuania, so we don't know. What would you recommend? Perfect, if it's Lithuanian, we're interested. <laughs> Can we have a Vienna? Yes, how much is a box? That's good for us. Do you do uh, coffee as well? Perfect. Can we get, do you want one? Tea? Okay, um, Vienna, is it Kavu or coffee? How do you say? Kava. Kava, Kava, okay. It's a very difficult language. <laughs> um, can I get it with milk, please? Actual. <laughs> So do you uh, do you live in Fab is it Fabianishkas? No. Is, is that how you say this place? Is it Fabianishkas? Yeah, Fabianishkas. Fabianishkas. Okay. Very hard to pronounce. <laughs> I've been trying to learn Lithuanian for so long, and it is easily the most difficult language I've ever tried to learn. <laughs> easily, without without a shadow of a doubt. But your English is so good. Everyone in uh, Lithuania, their English oh. is incredible. Ah, uh, you're being modest. It's amazing. <laughs> it's very very good. My car. What is it? Cordella? Cordella. <laughs> you in here or take away? Here, please. Thank you. What's it like in Fabio Nishkos, then? Is it a cool place? Uh, it's very, very different to Vilnius. Yeah, it's not really safe, actually. Really? Why yeah. not? Yeah, it's... Is it like a, a kind of, like a ghetto kind of place? Yeah. Really? Yeah, I think so. It seems really peaceful, but then in England, like our ghettos are like very, 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 very dangerous. So for us, this doesn't seem yeah, very dangerous yeah, to us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. Have you ever been to England before, by the way? Uh, where? Have you been to England before? Uh, yeah, I've been uh, to uh, London one day. London? Yeah. Uh, I went to Portugal. What did you? Oh, and, and then, then you. It's expensive, isn't it, London? Yeah. <laughs> what did you think of England? Did you like it? Yeah, yeah. I really? Like You're the first person I've met who's ever said that. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. Wow, these look amazing. What are these called, sorry? 
Yeah. What are these things called? Jagarelli. 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 That's really interesting. There's a, a, a basketball team called Jagulis, I think it is. Yeah, Jagulis? Yeah. Jagulis. What does that mean? Does that mean something? No, it's not the... Uh... I thought it meant like green or something like that, because that's the colour, isn't it, of the football? Yeah, the shirt. Jele. Is that the word for, is that green? Green, yeah. Ah, so jele, so it's kind of similar to yeah, jele. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Actually. Yeah, that's true, yeah, yeah. Basketball's really popular in Lithuania, yeah. isn't it, as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, much more popular than football, yeah. Because where we live in England, um, sorry, I keep disturbing you, where we, uh, I don't get to speak to many people these days. Um, where we live in England, um, we've got, like, a massive Lithuanian community, um, and they kept saying to me, my friends, like, go to Lithuania, go to Lithuania. And, um, they were like, try and learn some Lithuanian as well, and they didn't tell me how difficult it would be, so... <laughs> Uh, we're this, so our final day is tomorrow, and we're going to Kaunas. Kaunas. We went to, I really hope I'm pronouncing this correctly, Trake. Trake. yes! I was saying Trakai for ages, and people were like, what? Where's that? I was like, Trake? They are like, uh, yeah, okay. And then we, uh, we also, obviously, are in Vilnius as well, but we got kind of bored of it, really. Like, it's, it's beautiful, but like, there's just so many tourists, and we were like, you know what, we want to go and see something different. So we were like, started asking asking around and people like very niche guests so they probably were like right send those guys into the hood and get them like <laughs> awesome thank you wow have you tried one yet yeah are they good let's give it a go mmm oh I like that that's good I go well with the coffee mm -mm -mm. and I have some of my drink as well because I'm parched can you open that <laughs> one handed. That's the benefit of having a travel companion. See how these people try to travel in solo and I'm like, how do they do it? How do they how do they open bottles? That's the basic thing, but you never think about it, do you? Oh man I needed that. Okay, so we come to a dangerous place. That's fine. We'll just be cautious. Right, anyway, I'm going to enjoy this coffee, or cover, and then uh, finish these off, and then we're going to explore. All right, guys, there we go. So what a lovely lady. And if you're watching, thank you so much for your time. I didn't catch your name, but you're really helpful and friendly. And uh, thank you for the warning as well. <laughs> um, in the UK, we have a lot of uh, ghettos, I guess they're called. I don't really say this is a ghetto. Um, and they're outstandingly dangerous, like incredibly dangerous. Um, England is <laughs> quite funny actually because a lot of people think, especially in America for some reason, thinks that England is uh, all tea and crumpets. Obviously that's a generalisation, I know not all Americans think that. <laughs> you probably have been to England and know that we've got some pretty, pretty terrible places ourselves. But it's not all bad, obviously you might have seen the video where I'm trying to showcase England's beauty because uh, we've got enough of that on YouTube, enough people slagging off England. You know what I mean, I don't want to be another one of those people. But England itself does have ghettos. And where we live, funnily enough, we live in the, well, it's currently the second worst rated, but it used to be the first worst rated place in the UK to live. And, uh, yeah, it's interesting. It's an interesting city, but I don't think it deserves that title, personally. I'm going to stand by that. What do you reckon? Do you reckon people deserve to be the first or second worst place to live in the UK? I've got no opinion on it, to be honest. <laughs> well, you're from Kings Lynn, that don't count. Kings Lynn, by the way, it's like to the east... West, is it? East. No, it's to the east of where I live, in or where we live in Peterborough. And she has a very, very slightly different accent to me, but she was raised in uh, in Kings Lynn, uh, Peterborough, so pretty much has our accent. But yeah, man. So I actually do like graffiti, if it's done properly and well. And that's some good graffiti. So I've got no beef with that. But look at these buildings, completely different. So obviously, as you can see, it really did inspire a completely different, uh, a completely different place. But as, it is, as you can see, these trees are very, very new. And you've still got these lovely little parks. You've got a lovely, you know, place over here. And as well, one of the best kebab shops, apparently, is here in Fabian, how did she say to pronounce it? I'm gonna to have to say Fabian Nishkes for now, because, uh, my pronunciation sucks, to say the very least. But uh, got these old stairs here. 
that's pretty cool look they provide something for your bike we don't have that in the uk so you're already beating us there guys but look at this look at these buildings they're absolutely massive and obviously designed to house many many people but yeah it's just crazy to think that this was the location of an actual mini series you know tums down there she don't step into the area <laughs> i don't mind so much i mean it is what it is um i'm not doing anybody any harm or at least i don't think i am i'm not trying to be negative um i like it here actually <laughs> if i'd had the choice i might have stayed here for a day it's just nice to get away from it all and the people here are very authentic and friendly and of course they are in uh in vilnius as well and across Lithuania and uh, that's an interesting perception um, people tend to think that Lithuanians can be quite cold or unfriendly well that's the kind of uh, the impression that people are trying to give me you know and I think that's a total lie <laughs> um, could be further from the truth everyone here is awesome <sighs> what a workout <laughs> Look at that, look. Wow. They don't mess around with the graffiti here. But yeah, you can see, like, how this must have inspired Pripyat in some ways. They would have had to, <laughs> they would have had to hide that KFC. That would have made it in there. But, uh, well, maybe it would. There was a KFC in the 80s, I'd imagine. But I don't know if there would have been a KFC in Soviet Ukraine back then look at the size of that lovely parks yeah they chose a good location it's cool but unfortunately our time is running out here which I'm somewhat disappointed about actually because I've enjoyed it it's uh it's been an awesome little place to visit now obviously there may be people in the comments like hey you showed the crap side uh, it's not that's not what I'm intended to do guys and I do apologize if that's what you think that's 100% not my intention I just want to show a different side there's no such thing as good and bad guys really is there there's just one thing and another but I I like something different and European cities if you visit them enough you'll realize they'll kind of blend in and they become they amalgamate into like this single entity and they all look the same even london to a degree has parts of it which looks like every other european city and so that for me is where these places interest me most because it's the heart of something that's a bit more real something that's a bit more day-to-day -day. i feel like the capital cities like london for instance if you go to london london's awesome i love london it's the best place ever but if you actually speak to some of the residents not all of them people love london but some of the residents some of the residents they're like it's overpriced it's dangerous in parts it's over over touristy and it's overstimulating so even people from london which you may consider to be a great city would have a different opinion and though i probably wouldn't recommend walking around the uh the residential areas of london with a camera all the time there are more interesting places in london than there are in the center or the terrace uh, or the uh or the tourists go because uh you know some of the best restaurants some of the best shops some of the cheapest eateries in london are outside of all of that and that's where you need to go and that lady there what a lovely woman she's a great example of the friendly kind lithuanian people who really take their time she was at work she stopped to talk to me she stopped to explain things to me so you can't go wrong but there we go guys fabianishkes what a cool place i've really enjoyed it if you're from fabianishkes i've really enjoyed your part of the city guys and i appreciate you having us and wow what a location it's been and to know that this has inspired Pribyat and has you know even been a filming location it's pretty amazing so we're gonna head back now to Vilnius and then on a train to Kaunas to go and explore Kaunas and from us in Fabianuskas we hope you have a great day and we'll catch you all very very soon